Welcome to the seventh video in the APM series and in this video what we're going to talk about is auto trim and auto tune which are two neat simple ways that you can do some quite complicated stuff automatically via the APM board itself. In the previous videos we've set the board up, we've configured it with a mission planner, we've done things like the fail safe options, we've powered it, we've done everything and now we are hopefully flying the board and um, arming it in stabilized mode, flying it around and potentially even trying things like the return to home feature so that we know if we ever get into trouble we have an ODS switch we can use. But for other boards there are a couple of things that always present challenges. The first is what's called trimming and that is typically done via um, little switches on the transmitter and these are clicked left or right until the model hovers in the air. Challenge with this is that for some boards um, by putting the trims in actually confuses it as you click into different modes. So for example if you're using something like a KK 2.0 board you don't really want to use the trims for the auto level you want to set it up in software and the APM the auto trim function is great because what you do is you take off, you hover in calm conditions, you keep the model as still as you can with the transmitter in the sky and then when you land it those trims to keep it in one position are automatically saved. So auto trim is what you use to get rid of any drift that you have in the model it might drift in left or right, uh, front or back or a combination of those it can be taken care of quickly and easily. The really smart one is auto-tune. Now you've probably seen lots of videos and read up or tried to read some of the documents about how you tune the PID settings. And the PID settings here are um, settable in the mission planner itself and it's a series of numbers for the proportional um, integral and derivative kind of control loops that control how the craft performs. And basically, by changing these numbers, you can change how locked in it feels, how aggressive it responds to changes in altitude. And every craft is slightly different, depend on uh, where the central gravity is, what the inertia, the weight, the battery that you're using, the motors that you're using, and the props. So there isn't one easy set of numbers that works for everything. However, the numbers for an APM work pretty well out of the box. But to have your model fly at its maximum potential, you need to tune these PIDs. And for other ways and other boards, there are very lengthy, iterative, time-consuming ways where you'll um, set it up, you'll change one um, of the PI or D settings, you'll go and have a little bit of a hover, fly it around, see if it feels good or not, and what you'll find is that it'll take quite a bit of time to get it sorted. With the APM you can actually say to the APM go and work this out for yourself and using its own internal sensors it will go and fly and flick itself in all directions multiple times figure out what the best PID settings are to give it the best response and then it will save those settings to itself so it's very very straightforward. And I'd always suggest that you do these two things once you've got the model so you can fly it about because it will really help make sure that everything is as good as it can be. So the first thing we'll do in the video is we'll look at auto trim. That's going to be quite a quick and easy one. And then we'll look at auto tune which will take us a little bit longer because I'll do a little bit of a flight video to show you how this thing twitches around in the sky. So let's talk about auto trim. So let's talk about what auto trim does. So here we have a little video of my APM quad flying and although you can't quite see it, um, it's drifting backwards a little bit. So I'm having to apply a little forward stick to the elevator to just keep it in position in the air. And if I let go of that stick, you can see it wanders back. Now the normal way you correct for that is you'd actually use the trims on the transmitter just a couple of clicks forward to take care of that. But with the APM, you can actually teach it what those inputs should be for all controls at the same time, and the APM will store them. So once we've done this, you should hopefully now see that this craft is pretty much sat in the air. Very slight drift, but sat on the air on its own without any control input, and that is what the result is when you've been through the process. So let's talk about the steps. 
First of all, you need to confirm that all the sticks on the transmitter are being read as the APM as 1500, which is the middle value. So what you need to do is jump into Mission Planner, go into the RC control bits and pieces, and adjust the sub trims on each of the controls on your transmitter until they read as close to 1500 for rudder, elevator, and aileron as you can get them. Once you've done that, then the next thing to do is just wait for a calm day. Uh, it has to be perfectly still. Any wind or breeze that pushes the craft around will mess this up. So you want um, no wind at all, ideally. I tend to find first thing in the morning is best. Or if you have access to an enclosed space, a barn or a sports hall, that's perfect to do this in. Next thing then, you want to arm your board and hold the arming position on the transmitter for 15 seconds. So here you can actually see um, the control board and the transmitter and I'm holding the sticks and once I've gone past about five seconds you'll see the board arm normally, the red light going solid to say that it's ready to fly, continuing to hold the sticks and then when I release them you've got these pulsing lights. Now these pulsing lights mean that we're ready for auto trim so to do that just hold that arming position for more than 15 seconds then immediately take off. Hover it around, try and keep it in one place for as long as you can. It says 25 seconds, but I tend to do it for about a minute. Set the timer on your transmitter and just really focus on keeping the craft as still as you possibly can in the air. Make sure it's at least six foot off the ground and then you're not in any kind of ground effect or turbulence that your own rotors are creating. Once you've done that, then you've pretty much done it. Land, disarm, and wait for about five seconds, four or five seconds, and the trims will be automatically saved by the APM into memory, and you're good to go. And the next time you take off, take off in stabilize mode, test it out, and you should find that any of that unwanted drifting is all taken care of. And you can do this as many times as you want. So if you have different batteries, or you put a piece of equipment on that's um, dragging the uh, model in one way or the other and you can't correct the CG normally then this is a nice easy way at the field to take care of that without stood there clicking trims for five minutes. Okay so that's auto trim nice and easy great thing to do once you're ready to start flying in, in anger the next thing then is an even funkier thing called auto tune. So let's look at auto tune. Auto trim was pretty easy to set up. We didn't have to do anything in APM or anything special with the board to do that. We just hold the arming position for 15 seconds to initialize the routine. With auto tune, there's a couple of other things that we need to do. And again, we'll step through each of the pieces one by one to make it as easy as possible to follow. All this information with um, auto trim and auto tune is available on the website for the Arducopter and we'll cover that again at the end if you want to know the detail. So first thing we need to do is set up one flight mode as altitude hold and also make one of the flickable switches on the transmitter that's not being used for anything else to start the commands. Now, usually that's channel 7 or channel 8. So what we do in Mission Planner is we go into the advanced settings and then down here where it says what does channel 7 do, we actually select it to turn on the auto-tune process. And we just confirm that the transmitter flicks the channel 7 into high when the switch is flicked. The other thing we need to do is just make sure that the mode, one of the flight modes that we have set up on the APM is altitude hold, because that's the one it needs to be in to complete the process. So if we've got both of those things set in Mission Planner, then we're good to go. Next thing we do, exactly like auto trim, um, is you need a calm day. You don't really want the, the craft being blown around. It's not as crucial for it to be absolutely calm as it is with the auto trim, but 
the craft will wander in the sky as it flicks around and tests the responses as it changes the PID settings um, to optimize them and that wandering it can cover quite a bit of ground while you're doing it but that's not a problem if it gets too far away from you you can fly the craft back to the middle of the field or whatever that you're in and then let go of the sticks and the process will continue you first of all arm the board in um, stabilized mode and then take it into a hover take it a good way away from you because it will wander around the sky get it up in the air about 20 feet and then flick it into altitude hold mode so that it's flying and maintaining its old its own altitude and then flick that channel 7 or channel 8 switch on whichever one you've configured and here you'll see the dance uh, I did film it from the ground station but because it's so far away for safety it, uh, it's just a dot in the sky but what's actually happening here is the board is um, flicking left to right and then front to back and it's changing the PID settings based on what it can sense uh, for the movement of the craft in correlation to the control input that it's giving itself and it does that for a period and this can take quite a few minutes so you need just need to keep your eye on it keep sending it back and then eventually it will stop and it I reckon give yourself three or four minutes once it's then hovering then it's it's running on the new settings so fly the craft around just move it just flick it from side to side see if you like the feel if you like the feel then bring it back to you while keeping channel 7 turned on land it disarm and those new PID settings are saved to the board if you don't like those new PID settings it's not a problem bring it into land and then turn channel 7 off before you disarm because having channel 7 on when you land after the auto tune process tells the board to save it and once you've done that that's done too so now we've got a board that has been configured or optimized it now sits level and drift free almost in the air without using GPS bits and bobs and it's also optimized for the motors and props that you're using for the PID settings for elevator and aileron so you should have a really good flying craft at this point and now you can really get to grips with Mission Planner and Mission Planner will be the next video in the series so just to remind you, if you want to get to grips with the nitty gritty behind these two processes, you can get them from the website, the screen showing the links for those two things here. And thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.